Welcome to Roblox Studio Basics. This Roblox Studio tutorial is for a complete beginner. Today we're going over this top bar portion. I'm going to begin to explain to you what most of this does, what matters for us as a beginner as we're learning, and what stuff you don't really have to look out for until advanced stages as we learn more in later tutorials. First, let's start with File by clicking on it. And we're going to use this a lot of the time. This File drop-down menu is in a lot of your basic softwares from Windows to Mac. A lot of common settings in here to start a new file, open another file, open a new place from a Roblox, and save your file as well. And then also from here, you'll be publishing your place to Roblox, so that way it updates to all of the servers. The rest of this stuff is a little more advanced, like your game settings. This is where you'll set the privacies and permissions, game title descriptions, things like that. But that's later on, so we won't worry about those things for now. The purpose of this video is to get you familiar with the interface that we're going to be using in Roblox. Roblox Studio. So that way when you begin following more complex tutorials, you know what you're doing. Clicking this like blank page button will open up a new base plate, a new file. This is the undo button and then the redo button. So let's say I go ahead and add a part by clicking this part button to my workspace and then I move it. If I click this undo button, it'll move it back. If I click it again, it'll be like I never put the part in the workspace. So if you ever mess up, just undo or control Z on the keyboard if you're on Windows. You can also click the redo button so I'll get that part back and I can move the part again, redo again. So that's undo and redo. So let's undo all of that. Next is the play button. So when you click that, you'll load into your game, your actual game. And now you'll see that you're in your base plate and you can uh, play around in it and play test your game. Now click stop. It should show up on the top. If not, just make sure you're on the home tab and you can click stop from right there or you can click stop. It's right next to the play button where where we left off. So we have the undo, the redo, the play button, and now there's a stop button. So you can click that as well. And you'll go back to the 3D workspace in production mode. So I've put a script in, called test into the server script service because this new button over here, which is like a binoculars, you click that. And then I want to find my script, which is called test. And you can see I can find my script very quickly, efficiently. And when I press enter, it opens my script right up. We'll be using that often, especially when we have complex games with many scripts. And then the little drop down button next to the binoculars, when you click that, that allows you more quick access buttons for you to click on. So if you want a cut or a copy or paste button on there, you can add those as well. But for now, we're just going to leave it as default. Right now we're on the home tab and there's already like a copy, cut, duplicate, paste button quickly and easily accessible here. And then we have all of the tools that will allow us to move parts. So let's go ahead and click on our workspace and add a part again. So our parts added right here. Let's click that and then let's click these move tools. So if we click move, arrows will show up and we can move our part around. Let's click scale. These little dots will show up and you can make your part bigger or smaller. And then if you click the rotate tool, you can rotate your part however, whichever direction you want, depending on the axis that you click on and rotate. And then going back to the clipboard section, we can click copy and then we can paste this. And so you can see that we've made another duplicate part. We can also so click this part and just cut it and then we could just paste it somewhere else again using those buttons. Don't worry about the mode here. That's advanced stuff. Let's have our move tool activated and let's talk about collisions. If this is checked on and I try to move this part into that part, I won't be able to do it because collisions are checked on, but that's how you can make parts sticky together. And then if I check collisions off, then these two parts will be able to go inside one another. When join surfaces is on, when you see that little white frame show up around the boxes and you let go, a weld is made underneath that part and those two parts are welded together. Next we have the terrain editor which is mostly for world building and that could be a whole tutorial in itself but I'm a scripter so this tutorial is focused towards programmers, coders, and scripters not world builders. The next button we have is the toolbox and this is where you can get a lot of your free models. Just letting you know now that if you use free models in your game a lot of players are going to stank on your game for some reason but there's many free models to choose from. And mostly what I would use are models that are either created by Roblox or endorsed by Roblox. Because if you take anything from a toolbox, sometimes there could be malicious scripts attached to them and you just want to be careful. So most of the time I stay completely away from the toolbox. So yeah, if the toolbox is open for you, then just go ahead and close that. You can use your imagination and build your own things, especially if you're just programming. Let's close the terrain editor as well. And then we're moving on to the part. So if we click 
click this part button, new parts will show up. So this is how you can create all your parts. You can change the shapes of your parts. So you can have a sphere, a wedge, a corner wedge, a cylinder. So with these different shapes, you can build different things. This UI button will allow you to build screen GUIs quickly. So if you go ahead and click that, it'll take you to a different tab called UI. And what it does is when you click screen GUI, it adds a screen GUI to the starter GUI folder in the Explorer. And then you can add other children to it. So we can add a frame and then we can add a text label. And then in that text label, we can change the name to like this video. Um, and we can make the text scaled so that way you can see it better. We can make all of this like anchor into the middle like so. And then we can make the text label show up over there like so. And there we go. That's GUI for you. But that's not what this tutorial is about. This is just about learning the UI of Roblox Studio and what the things do. So let me go ahead and disable that. Let's go back to our home tab. And so that's what the UI button does. So now the material manager button is also for builders in case they ever want to apply a texture to a part. So if our material manager is activated, you can see it shows up down here for me. I click a part and then I click brick. I click this little paint bucket here and then I apply it to my part and now it's got the brick texture on it. And that's how you can add some textures very quickly. So let's close the material manager. And the next one I use often, I change colors of parts a lot. You just click that little drop down menu and this is how you change the colors. So let's make that blue and then we can make this dark blue. We can make this one like red and there you go. That's how you change colors of parts. Okay, and then there's the group button. So what you do is you select multiple parts and then if you click group, it groups them into a model now. And then if you click the drop down menu and you click ungroup, then it turns them back into two parts, right? So click group again, it makes a model and then ungroup, it makes a couple of parts. So next is the lock button. So go ahead and click the lock button and then after you click it, your cursor will turn, turn into like a little lock icon. And what you do is you click the part that you want locked. So let's lock like this teal brick. So now that that's locked, let's click the lock again and that should turn off our cursor. And now we can no longer click this part and move it, you see that? But this other part, I can click and move it. So if you ever wanna like lock a building in place, then make sure you lock the part. So let's say you uh, like a team member builder is clicking around, well, they won't be able to move the part that you just placed on accident. Next is the anchor button. If you want your parts to stay in place where they are at, then go ahead and anchor them. You wanna make sure they're all anchored, otherwise parts will just fall down. And I'll show you an example of that now. You see how our parts just fell down? That's what happens when you don't anchor. So anchor your parts that you want to stay still, and then of course there's a big play button, which is does the same thing as the little play button that we saw earlier. That's all you have to worry about for now. And then we can skip over the resume button and you'll just wanna know where the stop button is at. So that way you can stop play testing. And then the game settings is the same place where you saw the settings. Team test will go over later and then exiting game. That's all team test stuff. We'll go over, that's a whole other video. Next, let's click on the model tab. There's more move tools over here, more of uh, repetitive um, collisions and join surfaces. And then over here is where you can alter your increment properties. So basically, anytime you alter an object with any of these tools with move, scale, or rotate, let's start with rotate. Every time I rotate one of these ticks, it represents five degrees here. So let's go back to zero. I can make this um, 45 degrees and now every tick will be 45 degrees. So these are the increments. So on the move and the scale tool, um, let's go with the scale tool here. What this this is saying is we can increment every 0.25 studs. Well, we can increment every 10 studs if we want to, and that'll make our parts much larger, faster. So it's just incrementing builds, and builders use this often. Pivoting is some advanced stuff, align tool, advanced stuff, builder stuff. Setting the pivot point just um, tells Roblox where the part should be rotating from. So if we don't want it to rotate from the middle, we want it to rotate from the edge, then we can edit the pivot point. Builders use the align tool a lot. I'm gonna skip over it. We have the part material manager color here again with the model. This is what the union button does. You go ahead and select a bunch of parts and when you click union, it makes a union model. So this is just like one, it's considered like one part that is all union together. And supposedly it can make your games run faster if everything is unioned. It makes sense, but none of us are 
probably going to build a game that's large enough to take so much data that we have to worry about unioning everything. So we can go ahead and separate that, but builders use this a lot. Um, we're mostly focused on programming. I just want you guys to know what you're looking at. Um, this next one are the constraints. I have a tutorial that deals a lot with this, but basically this is how I weld parts together. So if I have a part up here that I want to weld to this dark blue brick, well, I'll go ahead and click this part. I'll click my create drop down menu. I'll go ahead and create a weld and then I'll click my dark blue block. And now I have a weld there. But now let's say I'm a programmer. Oh, and I need a spring there as well. So I'll just go ahead and click the spring create and then I'll click my part and then I'll put a spring to the blue part there. Now we have a spring constraint. You can use this for building vehicles. I have a door tutorial, which you can learn about spring constraints and hinge constraints as well. But I just want you to all be aware of that. And then these buttons are kind of just for you to see when you're kind of building. So if you click draw on top constraint details, you can see the different attachments and you can show the weld. So you can just see what's going on. The scale just makes these look bigger or smaller. So that way you can find them easily. The next button effects. So this is just an easy way to add smoke particle emitters to your parts. Um, like for instance, let's say we want to add fire to this brick. Let's turn off all of these. Let's say we want to add fire to our brick. We can just click the effects and click fire. And now our brick is on fire because it has a fire emitter on it. And then let's add some smoke. So that way, you know, it's a little bit smoky. Um, let's add it to our part. There we go. So yeah, that thing's on fire. So it's just an easy way to add some effects to your parts. Um, we can also add another spawn. That's what the spawn button does. So just alternate spawns don't really need that. This is mostly for builders to do their thing, but you need to programmatically know how to, you know, as a coder, as a scripter, how to access these, how to make new new instances of these. So we don't really have to worry about that. The rest of this stuff is advanced stuff, which we'll go over later, but mostly what I want you to know about is collision groups here. We're gonna be using these in some tutorials where we add new collision groups and do some things with doors and various other tutorials. So I just want you to know that's there. Next, let's go over the test tab. This is more advanced stuff that we'll get into when we actually get in tutorials about how to make a game in Roblox Studio. The view tab, this is important. Whenever you lose anything, let's say you lost that Explorer, you're like, where's my Explorer? Where did it go? I accidentally closed it and I don't know what to do. Well, you go to this view tab and then you click the Explorer and that returns the way it is. Another time I was looking at a part and I accidentally closed my property tab and I was like, man, how do I get these properties back? Well, same thing in the view tab, you click that properties and the properties of the parts are now there and you get to see each one. There's other buttons here, but this is where you get the toolbox and that's where I open and close the toolbox. The asset manager is important to me because that's where you can upload your own sounds, textures, things like that. The rest of these are kind of advanced things. You can set full screen. You can set whether you see this like little widget here. You can turn that on or off. You can take a screenshot. You can record video, things like that. You can alter the grid and, you know, see exactly where you're placing things you can set the studs of the grid but there's you know there's already a grid on that base plate i don't really use these tools I don't use wireframe rendering, anything like that. And the rest of this is advanced stuff, which could show you your FPS, how many parts are in your world, things like that. Last but not least is the plugins tab, which there could be a whole separate video on this because there are many useful plugins to use in Roblox. And honestly, each plugin could have its own video. I just want you to be familiar that the plugins tab is here because in the future, we'll be having to add plugins as we get into tutorials on how to make a game. Now we can begin getting into more in-depth tutorials now that you are familiar with the UI and are familiar with where things are. So when I'm talking about them, you know where I'm going. Follow along on the playlist and eventually we're going to be making a game together. With all of that said, don't forget to press the like button and I'll see you all next time.